share with you five beginner race bad mistakes to avoid so that you can avoid any struggles that comes with it and set your race beds up to grow lots of food. The first mistake is not growing in raised beds at all. There's two reasons to grow in raised beds. Number one is that if you have poor quality native soil or concrete, then your plants are not going to thrive growing in it. We have a lot of clay below our garden and clay has terrible drainage. Clay is also very hard and tough, so it wouldn't be the best soil for growing our vegetables in. The second reason is before we built all of these raised beds for our garden, we just had garden in mounds of soil for two or three years. And after growing in them, what we found is that the soil will kind of just slide away and then we'll have to come back and pull it back up. But then before we knew it, it would be back to its landslide and it go and it fall away and now we'll be left with basically a pancake to grow in. The raised beds stopped the soil from sliding away and instead kept it contained within the four sides. So if you're going to invest in good compost and soil, then I highly recommend that you grow in raised beds so as not to waste your money. The second mistake is not thinking your raised bed garden for the long term. If you know you're going to be growing food for the next 10 or 20 years, which you probably should, because the price of food is not going to get cheaper most likely, and homegrown food tastes way better than any store-bought food, then planning to invest in some metal raised beds as an asset for every growing season, even if it's only a few at a time, is a wise choice. But with metal raised beds costing a lot, there are two other things you could do to make your raised beds last longer. The first is charring the beds of your raised beds before you build them. Charring or burning wood to make it last longer is a technique that was used by the ancient Japanese originally called Yaki Sugi, now named Shao Shugi Ban. We built this raised bed using this method and not only does it look interesting, burning or charring wood was done by the Japanese people in the 18th century. The true way to do a Shao Shugi Ban is with cedar boards because the part Sugi in it means cedar and it is the national tree of Japan where the method originally came from. Shao Shugi Ban, natural way of treating wood, some say it will make the wood last 50 to 100 years with some basic maintenance because the carbonized wood creates a weatherproofing against the outside conditions. Second is to make your raised bed out of materials that don't rot, not wood. We built this along with some of our other raised beds out of scrap roofing metal that we got for free. Roofing metal is cheaper than buying metal raised beds. You could buy roofing metal to build your own metal raised beds from your local hardware store and although it might not look good with rounded corners, it'll at least last longer than your wooden garden beds. The third mistake is not thinking about the paths in your design. The paths has to be wide enough so you can easily move a wheelbarrow through them. For the main path, tree foot will make it easier turning in and out to the smaller paths. Smaller paths could be two feet. This is a mistake we made in this garden and sometimes the wheelbarrow could be difficult to maneuver. But from the start we wanted more space for growing food so we decided we would shrink the paths and it would be okay if we have to use buckets to get to hard to reach areas. However, if you're going to be gardening for a long time and you're middle aged then making the paths wider will make it easier so it won't be a hassle when you get older. The fourth mistake is using poor quality soil to fill your raised beds. Spending money to build raised beds to contain the soil and stop soil erosion is useless if you're not going to be putting good soil in it. The way I filled this raised bed was with the method known as Hugo culture. Hugo culture is a method that we love for filling all of our deep raised beds because not only does it save money on filling them, it will also turn into rich compost that has good water holding capabilities. I don't want to spoil too much of it for you because we dug up a raised bed that we did this method three years ago on and the results were quite interesting. I'll make sure to link to that video right below this one. It starts by placing large logs at the bottom of the bed. Then the next level is going to be filled with small branches and twigs. On top of your branches and twigs is to add leaves, grass clipping or mulch. 
The finer material will fill the gaps in between your twigs, branches, and the bigger logs, which will prevent soil settling problems. The top 10 to 12 inches is going to be rich, good soil. This top layer is where plants roots grow and they get most of their nutrients from. What I find is that if you fill this last top layer with more manure and compost instead of a lot of topsoil, it will make your plants grow bigger. One important thing to know is that for sure to raise beds like these 6 inch beds, you won't want to use this method for filling it and only fill it with soil, otherwise the plants won't be able to get enough nutrients from it. All gardening fans, I see you enjoying this video, but did you ever have questions that you're waiting for and never been answered? Well now, us and Tweaker are offering channel memberships. With it, it will give you your chance to help us get your questions answered. Ask us any gardening question you like and we'll give you our best answer right to you fast. Plus, in every video we select one member who joins Tweaker in the Tweaker Nation to give a shout out to in our long form content. Custom emojis that we make ourselves like these, membership stickers and posts where you can help us decide what content you want us to make. If any of that sound like great stuff, go to our homepage, click join, and select Tweaker Nation for $8.99 Canadian a month. Thanks for your support and thank you a lot. The fifth mistake is not taking full advantage of the space in your raised beds. Not using the vertical space where you could stick a trellis in the back of your raised bed and let something grow up is losing out on extra harvest. Tomato, cucumbers, peas, and beans can all be grown on a trellis. Growing them vertically will reduce pests and disease that could have got easy access to the fruits or pods when they are just lying on the soil. We have a raised bed with a trellis just for growing our tomatoes and cucumbers so we don't have to plant them in the other raised beds. The space that you save by growing your cucumbers and tomatoes of a trellis like this is when tomatoes get six feet tall instead of them all being sprung out on the ground they'll be up on the trellis so we get a high yield. Another way that allows you to take full advantage of your raised bed is the square foot gardening method. I've grown lettuce using the square foot gardening method and what I found is that when I plant one per square foot I get a bigger head than if we plant four per square foot. The square foot gardening method could be applied to a whole bunch of other crops so I'll leave a link to a free square foot spacing guide that has over 40 different crops so you could use it to plant your garden. I said five mistakes in the beginning but I have more of them so here's some bonuses. The sixth one is not protecting crops growing in your raised bed because it allows all kinds of pests to come and eat your hard work. Pests are always on the lookout for an opportunity when they can come and get a snack. So you want to make sure to protect your beds with some insect netting like this one that I have here. I'll make sure to link to a good insect netting in the description. The seventh mistake is not carrying the paths in between your raised beds. I use cardboard first, then wood chips as a mulch to stop the weeds because what I found is that if I just use the wood chips alone, the weeds will still come in and they'll come back in numbers. Cardboard is more of a solid material so it will act as a weed barrier. You can get cardboards a lot of times from grocery stores because they are throwing it out and they may be even paying to do so. Just be sure to ask them though. The next one is that raised beds don't have to be expensive. This year, me and my brother built this raised bed out of pallets that we got for free and it has an awesome looking design. Pallets are a great way to make your own free planted box out of and start growing your own food. If you want to know how to build a raised bed like the one I just showed you, then make sure you watch this video over here. Goodbye!